So we have our two triangles here, but they're not very interesting. They are both white, nothing racist against white people, but I like to have a little bit of a more colorful world. So the way we do that is by coloring our vertices. For example, if this vertex is blue and this vertex is blue and this vertex is blue, then OpenGL will essentially make the entire triangle blue. Hopefully you get the idea there. If this one's red or blue <laughs> and this one's red and let's say this one is blue over here then what we'll see is a lot of blue down here but eventually it will blend into red over here. I think the best way to show you is by actually doing it. Anyway, we need to color these vertices. Right now the only attributes we have on our vertices are their positions. And in order to color them, we simply add more data values here that represent their colors as well. We can represent color values by an RGBA. RGBA, R is for red, G is for green, B is for blue, A is for alpha, which is a little bit more complex than you would imagine. We'll get into alpha later. For now, red, green, blue is all I care about. So. Here we go, we have vertex 0, vertex 1, vertex 2, 3, and 4. Let's add a little bit of color to each vertex. I'm just going to hit enter here and positive 0, dot 0, comma, control C, control V, V, V. Well, we will just do RGB for now. I'm going to copy this and paste it here and here here and here. So now each vertex is made up of five floats. Okay, two of the floats are the position, three of the floats are the color, and same down here. Here's another vertex, like so, and another vertex. I don't know why I'm doing different colors, I don't need to, but hopefully you get the idea. And then we can number our vertices the same as what we did before. This is vertex zero, vertex one, vertex two, so on and so forth. I'll even box these in for you as well, but they'll both be black. Okay, so there we go. We've just added color attributes. Now we need to describe our attributes to OpenGL. If you remember, we did this vertex attrib pointer, which basically says, hey, for attribute zero, which OpenGL assumes to be the position, it is made of two floats, right? Two floats. Right, don't normalize them for me. We'll talk about that later. Don't worry about it. Uh, these two last arguments, though, are interesting. The first argument here, if I hit Control shift space you'll see the stride, and the stride is the distance in bytes between those vertex attributes. So this actually threw me off a little bit. Here's one position, and then the next position is right here. And so I thought, well, the stride would be 3, because there's 3 floats here, 1, 2, 3, times the size of a float. I would assume the stride would come off the end of one and to the beginning of another, but that is not how stride works. Instead, let me grab our position attributes here. Stride goes from the beginning of an attribute to the beginning of the next attribute. So the stride is actually 1, 2, three, four, five times the size of a float. And I just notice here I didn't put F on these, so I'm going to do that. Don't blink. That's just me being too picky. But anyway, the stride is the distance from the be beginning of the one set of attributes to the beginning of the next attribute. So five times the size of a float. Let's put that down here. The stride is no longer zero. Okay, and, and zero means it's tightly packed. With zero, it actually does mean, before we put the color attributes in here, let me just take this color out, it does mean tightly packed, the end of this one to the beginning of the next one. That's what zero means. Zero is a special value, and I think that's why that threw me off, is I just figured it was the end of one to the beginning of other. But if this, if this is anything but zero, then you're actually describing this position to the beginning of the next one. So anyway, let's get our, our oops, let's get our color back in there by... Control Z. So here we go. Size of float times five 
because there's five of them. Obviously, this is horrific magic number programming, but again, this is a scratch pad, a graphics pad, and we're just trying to learn some basics here. Now, this next one is a void star pointer, which actually is not a pointer. It looks like it'd be a pointer into our memory or something like that, but what it's really looking for is a pointer, and, and if you think about it, a pointer is just a, a, an int. Right, it's just a number. So yeah, the data type is pointer, void star here. This is kind of coming from back from way back in the day uh, before we sent all of our data to the graphics card. We could actually send client data down here and client data meaning we'll just, we would just pass verts down here instead of sending them down to the buffer. Ignore that for now. All it's asking for is a void star. What it really is is an int. It's a byte offset from the beginning of the buffer. Where can it find the first attribute. Well, in this case, with attribute 0, which is our positional attribute, the offset is 0. It starts right at 0, right here at the beginning of the array. So I'll leave this 0 right here because that's fine. Now we have a color attribute. We need to describe that color attribute to OpenGL. So again, the first thing, just like we did before, I'm going to say GL enable, enable vertex a trib array, like so, and this is attribute 1, okay, attribute 0 is position, attribute 1 is, it's a generic attribute, but for us it's it's position, eventually we'll add surface normals and other values in here, but 1 is just a number for us to say, hey, when we're, we're talking about 1, we're talking about color, so we're going to enable that to be sent through the graphics processing pipeline, and then, just like we did up here, we need to describe our data to OpenGL. So again, GL vertex, a trib pointer, which is basically I'm telling you where to point at, where to start at in this data I sent down to you. In, in it's sitting on the graphics card, a trib pointer for attribute one. Okay, attribute one, not zero. Zero is our position. One is going to be our color, comma. The size, well, it's three GL floats, all right? Just like here, we said two floats for the position, two floats, well, we're sending down three floats, three floats for the color. Next argument is normalize GL. Please don't touch my data, it's kind of, uh, if, if that was true, if you understand vectors, it will normalize all the data before actually storing it on the graphics card. A little bit of a, um, prefix up, but don't worry about that. The stride, well, for position, the stride was from here to here, so it was one, two, three, four, five floats. What's the stride for colors? Well, what's the stride for a color? Well, a color starts here, and then the next color starts right here, so it's one, two, three, four, five floats. It's the exact same. It doesn't matter what attribute we're talking about because the stride is the same. If you again, stride is what's your stride? If you're walking, you know you have a long stride or a short stride or that kind of thing. The stride is exactly the same. So I'll copy that right here. Then this next argument is kind of interesting. Again, it's a void star pointer, but it's really just an int. It's a number. It's it's how many bytes into this into this array do I need to go before I get to the beginning of where your data begins? In this case, we have one two floats until we get to the beginning of the of the color data. So let's describe that in OpenGL right here. It's size of float uh, times two. But again, OpenGL, because it's of its oldness, it's been around for a while, it expects this void star pointer, and so we need to cast it to some type of pointer type to satisfy OpenGL. It seems dirty, but I don't feel that dirty because it's a requirement of the API, so whatever, void star pointer. And if you look later, I'll show you how to do a macro to solve this, which is the exact same macro all the documentation does to solve that as well. So there you have it. We've described our positional data. We've described our color data. Let me control F5, run this, and hopefully we still get our two triangles that we had before. And we do, but you'll notice that they're white. They're white, but the, the color data we sent down is, hey, no red, no green, no blue. So you would have probably expected a black triangle. Well, the only thing OpenGL will assume about our vertex data is that the first attribute or the zeroth attribute is position. And then after that, this is general data that is for us to use 
and our shader code. So in order to get our triangles to respect these color values, we have to write some shader code, which will execute on the graphics card, and then that will change the color of our triangles. But before we do that, let's try doing red just to prep ourselves for the next video. Let's try to set all these to red. And in the next video, we'll write shaders, compile them, link them, set them up on the graphics card, and, and if all goes well, we'll have some red triangles.